yeah, you know, you know, pleased to get the win. Um, you know, again, it kind of took us persevering into the second half and, and uh, getting some goals late there, uh, even though we had some opportunities. But, you know, I think we lacked a little intensity to start the second half. And, and you know, I think Mitch um, made a couple of really big saves for us to, to make sure we got the result and, and, and stay on top. So it was really good performance from both the guys sitting here with me. Just talk about the perseverance of your team to keep fighting and step on and put that one home off a beautiful play, you know, in the corner. Yeah, um, I think we we just needed to keep going. They were sitting really deep, and we just needed to stay on it and be consistent with our attacks. And we started slow in the second half, but then we got we got to pick it back up, and then. Once Stefan scored that first goal, it just felt like the floodgates opened and we were able to really start attacking them and that's just worked out great. Um, talk about kind of the fact that routine was a little different today, playing at noon uh, as opposed to seven. Were you worried about that coming in and you know, how did you guys then ultimately adjust to this change? Yeah, I'm a little bit superstitious, so I mean, I was definitely a bit worried, but I, I just think the the change was was good because it's something that breaks regular habit, and now it shows that we can adapt to this. And um, I, I I would just say that it worked out it worked out good, and I I was able to get into a good routine, even though the game was at noon. I don't know when the last time it's happened or if it's happened in Akron history, but three games in a row with two goals. I mean, just what is it that just keeps you staying hot and motivated and hungry to keep fighting after one to get that second so long? I don't know. I, I'll give a lot of credit to the team because <clears throat> they, uh, they're getting me they're feeding me the ball, you know, without them, it wouldn't have, it wouldn't be able to happen with them. And I just think in training every day, everyone's pushing each other. So, um, I, I don't, I would just give a lot of credit to the team. I don't think it's anything individually that I've been doing. I think it's a collective thing that this just shows for the team. Head over to Mitch here real quick, unless you have one. Mitch, just talk about play your defensive line in front of you and you're standing back there and realizing there's a lot of special things going on in front of you but when it comes down to it you're able to make those saves to keep the team off the scoreboard and give the chance, team a chance. Yeah I think it's um, it's really nice to put into perspective again how um, you know we give props to other people. The other keeper he had like you know 10 shots on target he had to deal with uh, and luckily for me I only had two shots on target um, you know but either way um, our defense is doing a fantastic job to you know, reduce the uh, amount of things I have to deal with. But as, as long as I'm communicating, everybody's communicating together, uh, should be scoring goals, you know, that's all that really matters. Uh, I mean, Coach kind of mentioned it. Like, it almost was that first save that he did make that kind of woke up everybody else kind of. And yeah. talk about that adjustment of playing at noon as opposed to playing at 7. Yeah, um, the adjustment, I don't think it's a, it's a crazy thing because, I mean, we're usually training around, you know, this time frame. Um, so I think it's it's just something, you know, once we get into the cycle of kind of uh, like a similar uh, time frame of when we're training, uh, everything just becomes easier. And, um, you know, of course, maybe it took us a little while, you know, to get going. Um, but we were pretty dominant like the whole entire game. So, uh, but no, I don't, I don't think it was nothing, anything crazy. Jared, just kind of the same question about the time adjustment. And, uh, I mean, obviously, result-wise, didn't really do anything. But maybe from coach's perspective. Yeah, I mean, I think I think when you're playing at seven, and if you play at noon and don't get a result, you immediately think about, well, we're not used to playing at noon. You know. Uh, it really just comes down to routines and, and guys get settled in a certain routine and 
I think when they realize maybe the game's coming quicker than later, they, they don't have those routines and it becomes a distraction in the mind. So it's, it's kind of, you know, I think we tried to bring it up earlier in the week to say, hey, look, you know, things are going to happen quicker. Your, your routines, your superstitions, whatever they are, you got to be aware that it's a different frame, time frame for when they happen. And, and also eating and sleeping. So noon games, your, your, your sleep probably Thursday nights as important as Friday. Um, so I, I just think for us it was, uh, you know, I felt like we did get off to a good start and, and, and um, you know, it looks, looks to be a non-factor for us today. What does it mean to play on a, on a homecoming game day? Like just here at Akron? Because I don't think it's – really ever happened before we played on homecoming. Yeah, I don't, I don't know when the last time it is. I, th I think for us that it, uh, it, it was nice to see uh, people come out early to support us and, and rally around us. And, you know, we always feel like, uh, you know, we're, we're a strong representative of the university. So to be able to play on the most important day for alums to come back and and win like we did, I, I feel is a really good message about our program and, and, and the community itself.